I bought this monitor mainly for video and photo editing. I spent weeks doing research before I decided to buy this expensive professional monitor. I love it and it's the best monitor I've ever owned, but in hindsight, maybe I should have pulled the trigger on something else. Be sure to watch till the end to find out why. This is an Ultra HD 4K 2160p IPS monitor. If you have no idea what that means, check out all the details of that and more in my video titled Computer Monitor Buying Guide. The monitor came factory color calibrated. Honestly, I have no idea what a lot of those numbers mean. I haven't recalibrated it since, and I trust those numbers. Besides, it looked great out of the box. I can never go back to using something less than 32 inches as my main monitor. There's plenty of connectivity options, an HDMI port, a display port, a USB-C port, an audio out, a USB upstream port which acts as a hub, a USB downstream port, another USB downstream port with power charging, and two more USB downstream ports on the side. One being with power charging, which I use to charge my Jewel. I don't use any of the USB ports for anything serious since they're all USB 3.0. I prefer to use the USB 3.1 ports out of my motherboard, but USB 3.0 is still fast if you need to use those ports. It's really easy to install. You just put the base together and hook it to the mount. It's a gem to look at and use. It looks very professional, as most Dell monitors do. You get an edge-to-edge -edge viewing experience with virtually no bezels. Connect your laptop to the monitor by using an HDMI display port or USB-C cable depending on the ports available on your laptop. Just close your laptop and the screen gets mimicked on the monitor. Notice that it automatically detects the source and switches input from that device without having to manually change it on the monitor. If you use USB-C, it also charges your laptop. For menu access, there are several buttons at the bottom of the monitor. Note these are not touch buttons, which I have on my 1440p monitors. I don't like those as I have to press a couple of times on the sweet spot for it to respond. Access in the menu is really easy. Pressing any of them will pop up the settings menu. The option on the left lets you choose a preset mode depending on the content you're viewing and your personal preference. The button to the right of that allows you to choose the input port. The next button has quite a few options. There's also a picture-in-picture -picture option that allows you to input and view content from multiple devices at the same time on the same monitor. My favorite part about the large work surface area is when I'm editing videos. I have all of the elements on one screen and the timeline is all visible without having to scroll left or right too much. I can even preview the project at full resolution when playing back the timeline. This way I can see exactly what the video will look like when it's uploaded and be able to accurately do color correction and grading. One thing to note if you do play that back at full resolution. Make sure you have a decent CPU and GPU because they're gonna get pushed hard as you can see. This image I shot is 25 megapixels. The colors look amazing on this monitor and you can capture all of the details when zooming in without pixelation. Depending on the display you're viewing this video from, I'm not sure you're able to see the amazing colors this monitor produces, but the images look mesmerizing when viewing on this monitor. Besides the colors, I like having this large size monitor with a high resolution that gives me a bigger work surface allowing me to see and do more. I can easily toggle between windows and have easy access to the 100 Chrome tabs opened. There is one caveat though, and that is scaling. Both Windows and Mac OS can get around the issue of 4K resolutions using scaling. At 100% you get a lot more real estate, but it's not practical. I can't see the icons or text because they're very small. I have mine set to 125%, which is perfect for me. Despite the high price of over $900 when it's on sale, this is a great monitor for entry-level color grading professionals. You're probably saying to yourself, that monitor costs that much and it's considered entry level? Yes, there are monitors that are better than this one and cost a lot more. Meet the Asus Pro Art Display PA32U suck. I mean UCX. Yeah, I suck for not being able to afford that monitor. I bet you didn't know monitors can get that expensive. Even though this is an HDR10 rated monitor, it's the worst kind of HDR. If you don't know what HDR is, we know that the more pixels, the better the image quality. But not all pixels are created equal. HDR makes those pixels perform better by improving the contrast between light and dark. The whites look brighter, the darks look darker, and the overall color spectrum is wider, offering more colors. HDR10 is a standard that has sub-levels. This monitor is HDR400, there is HDR500, 600, 1000, and even 1400. That number indicates the brightness measured in nits, or one candela per square meter. Basically the luminance intensity. Another thing that this monitor has is good but not great contrast ratio of 1300 to 1, which means that the whites are 1300 times more brighter than the blacks. 
the higher the contrast ratio, the deeper the blacks are. Basically, the contrast ratio is the difference between how white and how black a monitor can get. Another issue is the glare produced by this monitor. There's some kind of anti-reflective and glare coating, but it doesn't do a good job as you can see. Best panels for contrast ratio are VA panels with a contrast ratio of over 2500 to 1. Actually, the best contrast ratio is on OLED displays in which the blacks are as black gets since each pixel is self-illuminating and is able to turn itself off. There aren't many monitors that are OLED with the first ones announced late last year. You can buy one now and pay $4,000 for a 21 inch monitor. The worst contrast ratio is on a TN panel, but that panel is the best for gaming. Speaking of gaming, the last thing I don't like about this monitor is that, as I mentioned in the intro, that it isn't good for gaming. You can still play games on it and enjoy doing so. Not so much winning, but I enjoy playing. The refresh rate on this monitor is a measly 60 hertz with a response time of 8 milliseconds. Higher refresh rates of 144 hertz or more and a one millisecond response time is preferable for gamers, but this monitor is not marketed for gamers anyway. To summarize things, if you're looking for a professional grade monitor that's affordable and you're starting out, this is the one to get. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you got value out of it, hit the thumbs up like button, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of any new content I put out. Let me know in the comment section below what monitor you use or if you have any questions about this video. I'll check you up later.